Hello, my name is Courtney and this is the Mosaic Palette 3 and with it, your printer can print in eight colors and make models like these. If you're considering buying a Palette 3, Mosaic has announced a price increase of $100 on both the Palette 3 and the Palette 3 Pro starting April 15th, 2022 due to increasing costs and in shipping. And so I wanted to get a chance to get this review out and see if I can get some information out there. I've been working with the Palette 3 Pro since November of 2021, and prior to that, I used the Palette 2 for a good while. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the Palette 3, and I want to do a little bit of comparing to the Palette 2 since it is available for purchase in some retailers. First, what's the Palette 3? Well, it's not a 3D printer. It's a companion product that enables your printer that would print in a single filament at a time to be able to print up to eight different colors. And there are two versions of the palette. There is the Palette 3, which has four filament paths, so it can splice up to four filaments. And there's the Palette 3 Pro, which can splice up to eight filaments. Your printer is going to do the job it always does. It's printing the model. It gets G-code, it prints the model. The palette in this case, though, needs to send a single strand of filament to your printer, delivering the right colors at the right time so that in the end, your final model is going to look correct. But how does the palette know what to splice when? That's through a product called Canvas. It's Mosaic's web-based tool. In Canvas, you're gonna load up models and you're gonna create multi-material colored versions of them. And this is done in two different ways. One is you might have a model that's already broken up into parts, one per color. So there were two files for this, one that I colored light green and one teal. I'm not sure why those colors, but that's what I went with. Or you might have a single model that then you can take and assign colors in any way you want. Like I took this one and I added all different colors to it. You can even put stamps on it. It's got a lot of interesting features. So once you're done painting up your model, then you're gonna do multiple different things in Canvas. You're gonna have Canvas slice it, just like you would with a regular slicer. You're gonna see the same type of settings that you see in Cura, Prusa Slicer, or other slicers. And it's going to slice the model and create the information that it needs to send to the printer. And it's also gonna create more information that it's going to send to the palette so the palette knows what colors to splice together when to get your model to look exactly like it looks in the picture. Set up an installation. The palette comes very well packaged. It's simple to set up. There are only a few things to plug in. And if you're interested on all the details on that, I did a live stream. I'll put a link up here and you can go through the whole setup and configuration with me for the palette three. But I'll give you a quick rundown. The first thing is you're gonna to connect to the network. That's right, your palette has Wi-Fi connectivity. And this is something the palette two didn't have. And there's a whole bunch of additional functionality we get that makes things lots easier because of the fact that your palette is going to be on Wi-Fi. It'll then update the firmware, and yes, it's going to go through some firmware updates because there have been multiple rollouts as of the release of this video that have not only fixed some bugs, but have also added functionality. Another nice feature. You don't have to find out if there's a new firmware, it will automatically update. After that, it's gonna have you log into Canvas, which is their online tool where you do um, its web-based model painting, and it's the workflow for how you slice and send models to the palette. It will have you create a setup, and it's gonna say, what printer are you printing with? Define your printer or pick one from an existing list, and you can have multiple setups. You can do the palette with any printer, which is a great advantage. You can do it with a direct drive or a Bowden drive printer, which reminds me that the next thing it's gonna say is what is the length of your Bowden tube? Because it has to know how far away is the palette from the end of the nozzle so that it knows how much filament to splice before it starts the print job. And so it'll have you answer a couple more questions. And then it says, we're going to now do the first print and it'll just walk you through the first print to print the mosaic keychain with two filaments. And that's an important thing. I didn't do it with a palette too. You want to do this. I don't know if you can exit out. Absolutely do this because this is not just printing a keychain. It is getting and confirming calibration information for the palette setup. And when this completes printing, you have finished the setup and you can move on to getting prepared to start printing your models in up to eight colors. I wanna talk about Wi-Fi integration a little bit because I think this is one of the biggest enhancements with the Palette 3. First of all, it gives us the ability to do a complete workflow. And with this integration, you can paint a model in the web-based Canvas tool, slice it in Canvas, and then have Canvas send that to the Palette. 
the pallet is going to start heating up your printer, the nozzle and the bed, and it will begin to splice filament. And once it has enough spliced, it will be sticking right out the end. The pallet will prompt you to do something called a smart load. And smart load will advance the filament with the extruder on the printer to get it to the exact spot it needs to begin the print. To compare with the pallet too, really there was no communication directly from the pallet in Canvas or the pallet in your printer. So starting a print would be done on the printer separately and you would start the job on the pallet separately. So this is, I think, one of the best features that's been added with the Pallet 3. Splice tuning. All right, you have to teach your pallet how to connect or splice your filaments together. And this is going to take some time, but it's totally worth it throwing random filament at the pallet and just hoping that the splices are going to be solid is a surefire way to have broken splices and therefore failed prints. So the splice tuning is two filaments at a time and you give it three pieces of information, how much heat, how much compression, and how much cooling, and their numerical values, one, two, three, four. And you do tests on that. And when it comes out, you're then going to check to see if that is a solid splice. And if it's a solid splice and it looks like it's holding together, then you go over to Canvas, create a material profile, printed solids, Jesse PLA, and save it. And the beauty of this is you now don't have to remember anything. It's all stored in Canvas. And when you start working with your models later, you just apply the filament profile. I think broken splices is the number one reason for failed prints with all the work I've done with the palette. So be sure you tune your splices when something goes wrong, and it will because this is 3D printing after all, you're gonna need to get behind these plastic covers. And Mosaic's made it really easy. They have these thumb screws and little magnetic spots to hold the thumb screws. And then you just lift up the covers to get into where the broken splice has happened. And you pull it out, fix everything, and then you put it back together. And don't be afraid, this, this is actually very easy to do. One thing I wanna point out is that they have this really nicely constrained buffer path for the filament. So the, fil pal uh, the pallet is gonna make filament at a certain rate and your printer is gonna pull it at a certain rate. And so you need a buffer between the two of them. And with the pallet three, they have improved it because everywhere that they can have PTFE, they have lined the entire path so that your filament splices, which might be weak, have been protected as long as they can from the point it's spliced to the point it reaches the tip of your nozzle. And I think this is a big improvement over the palette too. There are two printing modes to print your models. One is gonna be a multicolor model that you go into Canvas and you're gonna paint exactly or define exactly which colors go where. And this will use a transition tower so that those colors can be clean and come out crisp all across your model. So the transition tower and these painted models, you'll use Canvas for, but there's another mode and that's pattern mode. And pattern mode is done just with the palette directly. And this is fun. You can define a random pattern for it to use with up to eight colors, or you can use two Two colors and do a gradient or you can define exact specific amounts and do something like this and there's another thing that's great to do with this you can do it in concert with a printer so you can have it do pattern mode with a model and the printer or you can just have it create filament and spool it up in advance and what's great with that is you can make some filament of really neat colors and give it to a friend transition towers or purge towers what are they and do we need them yes so if you are going to have a model that looks like this, and I have yellow, red, and orange, and I want the colors to be crisp and clean, you're gonna need a transition tower. But the good news is that Canvas creates it for you when you lay out the colors. And we would like these, obviously, because it's sacrificial filament to be as small as possible, but you can have it too small. So for instance, here is a, uh, a skull jar, but I tried to keep the transition small. And in this case, I had a lot of bleed over. So we have control over this. We want the transition links to be as small as necessary, but what we need. So if this were for a customer, it might be a wasted model that I had to reprint. In this case, I'm using it as an example. And I love this little guy. So a purge tower is inevitable for some prints to be clean, but what can we do to improve the plastic waste? Purge to infill, it's on by default in Canvas. Shorten our translation links, provided we shorten them appropriately. Reduce the number of colors or add more models to the bill plate so that you take advantage of the transition tower you already have. Remember, the palette is doing what we ask it to do. So we're responsible if we have great big transition towers. 
all right, I have a feature request that I've put into Mosaic and I've never seen it done anywhere else. And I would love for there to be a zero transition length option. Right now you have to have a transition length of 30 millimeters or longer. There's side transition and some other options, but Mosaic has a hard limit. We have to purge in between colors. If you're going to paint a model, whatever you're gonna do, you have to have a transition length. And I almost would say, what would this look like if we didn't have a transition tower. I'm interested because I submit that these are done without a transition tower. These are in pattern mode and I don't see a lot of bleed through here. So I think it would be a fun option to be able to go into canvas, paint up a model however you want, a blue, a green, a red, and a purple side, and let the colors bleed through and however they would. I think it's an interesting option. I'd love to see it implemented. And so that's something I really think I want it. I want to, I want to have cool models with no transition tower that save on filament. So that's the palette three, but what if this may not be for you and you still want to do multicolor printing? Are there other options? Yes, there are tool changer printers. They're a little more expensive. Okay, maybe a lot like E3D's tool changer and the Prusa XL that's coming out later this year that has multiple up to five tool heads and you can have each one do a different color or a different type of filament. There are IDEX printers. There are a lot of those out there that is independent dual extruder IDEX like the Ultimaker and it has two extruders and each one can do a different color. And there's still a little bit of wiping and priming to be done, but it's a little different than having a full-blown purge tower. And then there are blending printers like the GTEC, which has two or three filaments that come into a single nozzle, the Cetus 2, the Lot Max Shark, and then there's the DaVinci Inkjet 3D printer that takes white filament and dyes it with ink cartridges. And then there are products that are very similar to the Mosaic palette but are limited to one printer. There is the Prusa MMU unit which can go onto a Prusa Mark III and does very similar functionality to the Palette III. And then there's the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder which is a Voron add-on. And those both are very much like the Palette but limited to one printer. So if this isn't for you, look into some other options. There are a lot of ways to print in multicolor these days. How accurate is the Mosaic Palette 3? Okay, it's really accurate. They have something called pings and pongs, and the pings are a way that the palette waits for the printer to find out where the printer is, because if the printer is not where it thinks it is in the filament, it's using more or less, the palette will adjust for that. And I've had models where I've had snapped um, splices, I've had to pull it, reload filament, so I'm obviously eating up some amount of filament length, but the palette realizes you're further ahead than we thought, and we will adjust further splices for that. And those are pings. And then there are pongs, which is the palette checking its accuracy. And at the end of every single print, you will get a question like, how was your print? And it's almost like thumbs up, thumbs down. And if everything worked, thumbs up, because it's gonna save it to its historical data. And over time, the palette will become more accurate after more and more prints. And so I think that's a really interesting feature that they have, that they're tracking accuracy every print. I have been, my experience is when a palette print is complete, I will have this much sticking out of the top of the extruder. It's that accurate over a 10 hour print, this much. That's pretty impressive. Let's talk about some pros and cons. Print recovery. We have the ability to do some print recovery now. Before with a palette two, if anything went wrong, your job was done. You could not recover. And so they've got some, they've added some recovery where if a job is not critically fail, you can continue it. So let's talk about other pros. The palette works with any printer. You can connect it to Bowden Tube, um, Direct Drive. It works with any printer. That is a big plus. It's the only tool that works like that. And it controls the printing process completely. You go from canvas where you paint to where you slice and then you send your job and then you can control your job, including now ability to have um, cameras so you can have a Raspberry Pi camera and watch your job. But the number one thing that is my biggest pro is the reliability. I had huge issues with my palette too. I had all the parts failed. I had more parts fail. I, I had it on vacation over, I took my palette on vacation with the printer and I had a homing switch fail in the middle of the palette announce. But I saw the functionality that they had added in here and how they had changed everything. And I was like, this is huge. So I, I ordered it because I really wanted to see it. And I have been very impressed provided I have my filaments tuned appropriately so that it splices it with the right settings, 
I can go to sleep and trust that this will be running in the morning. What are the cons? I would like to see in Canvas, I'd like to see Mosaic implement, and those would be Purge to Model and Purge Height Delta, and those are available in another product, and that is Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer has um, model painting for their MMU product. And so there is a community built product called P2PP and it is supported and they're working with Mosaic and Mosaic's working with them to have the ability to use the palette and Prusa Slicer together so that you can use the functionality in Prusa Slicer to take advantage of their model painting. There is not quite the connectivity, the full work cycle that you have or workflow that you have with Canvas, but it's got some extra functionality that's really nice. And one thing would be, if I'm going to do this and I have this purge tower, uh, the transition tower that have, instead of transitioning to a tower, transition to another object and just put another one of these on the bill plate and it'll look a little junky, but it might look really interesting junky. And the other thing is that it takes advantage of is if you can see here at the beginning, we're all orange. So this orange is just building a tower it doesn't even really need to build it that height, but it's following the height up as the print is built. With Prusa Slicer, it actually, instead of making these empty layers just to build height, it will go over after it prints this, drop down and print provided there's clearance. The canvas issue and having to work in a cloud-based environment where you don't have control of your own assets has been something that some people are concerned of. I do think that's resolved with the ability to be able to work in Prusa Slicer with P2PP. The other thing is this, I think we need an option for no purge tower, no transition tower. I think it should be an option. Other thing is there's no flexible material support and a lot of people are very unhappy about that. It was announced that it would be available and it is still in April of 2022, still not working. Uh, there are times when you will have a job fail. It does not look like it was a critical failure, but your job is ended and you're not quite sure why. It does still happen, but hey, I'm going to compare this, right? When we bought our 3D printers and got them home, we didn't expect to get perfection from that. Even a $4,000 printer, it's got moving parts. Anything with moving parts is going to have problems. So I expect the palette to work reliably, and it absolutely does, but it's not perfect. Do I like it? Yes, I love it. It's a lot of fun. I am not printing everything in color, but I think it has its place. I think there's some limitations, but I think Mosaic has done an excellent job of giving us a solid product. Now, whether that product is worth the price to you is a good question. It is definitely not something you want to jump into when you've just gotten your first 3D printer. Is it fun? Yes. Will it frustrate you? Yes. Will you spend time behind the plastic? Yes. But just like when your 3D printer drives you crazy and you figure out what's going on and then you get that beautiful print at the end, you're like, it's all worth it. It's like that to me. And I've gotten a lot of really good time with the Palette 3 and so I like it. So that's my experience. I know my experience is not the same as everyone else's. Please take that as my personal experience. I am not being paid by Mosaic anything at all. I bought this with my own money. I just like the product. I have done some live streams, two, um, two live streams, well, three, some, some live streams where I actually did some prints and then live stream where I unboxed it. And so I'll leave a link to those. All right, so what did I miss? For those of you who are working with the palette, let me know in the comments, let us know so we can get up to speed. I'm sure I missed something. And uh, hey, if you're new here, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and press that notifications button. We have lots of videos come out about filaments. I love filaments. This is filament stories. We do videos on individual filaments and all kinds of 3D printing topics. Love to do live streams. And uh, I will see you all next time with probably a regularly scheduled filament video. See you next time.